Here's a simple demonstration that can help show how the intensity of light varies with the angle of inclination. This is the reason why it's hotter near the equator and colder near the poles. By wrapping a cardboard cylinder around a lamp, you can create a roughly parallel beam of light that can be aimed at a piece of white card or small whiteboard held upright in front of the lamp. This should create a clearly defined circle of bright light, which you can draw around with a pen. By tilting the board backwards, you'll notice that the light spreads out into an ellipse. And the light is also not as bright as before. By drawing around the ellipse in a different color, you can compare it with the size of the original circle. The area of the ellipse when the board is tilted is clearly larger than the area of the circle the same amount of light is spread out over a larger area, demonstrating that the intensity of light is not as great. This helps illustrate how the latitude of a location on the Earth can affect the intensity of light it receives from the sun per unit area, and therefore the surface temperature in that region. At the poles, the sun's light is spread out over a wider area than at the equator and therefore the temperature is cooler. Using a globe and a strip of thermochromic paper, you can further demonstrate the effect of inclination to show how temperature varies with location. This can show pupils how the change of temperature with the seasons is due to the axial tilt of the Earth, not as is a common misconception because the Earth is closer to the Sun in summer. You'll need to stick a strip of the thermochromic paper onto your globe, next to the area you're interested in, and point it towards a bulb that represents the Sun. The bulb should be positioned at the same level as the area on the globe that you are interested in. Here, the UK is in its summer position, and you should see the paper heat up from black through red to blue. Counterintuitively, in this case, blue is the hottest. Six months later, the Earth will be on the opposite side of the Sun. The Earth is now tilted in a different direction relative to the Sun. It will now be winter in the UK. You can represent this new position by turning the whole globe 180 degrees. This means that the stand will be on the opposite side from your light source. Then spin the globe so the UK is back in its daytime position facing the sun. In the winter position with the UK higher on the globe, the paper next to the UK should not become as hot. Now, with the UK at a higher angle, the light is spread out over a larger area, so the intensity of light is less hence why it's cooler in the winter. The phases of the Moon are a consequence of the fact that the Moon orbits around the Earth, and this means over the course of a month, we can see different portions of the Moon's sunlit side. It has nothing to do with the Earth casting its shadow onto the Moon, as is a common misconception among students. Here's a way to demonstrate the phases. The Sun is very large and distant compared to the Moon. Therefore, we've used three closely spaced table lamps wrapped in cardboard cylinders to light our Moon with nearly parallel beams of light. One student represents the Earth while another operates the Moon, a ping pong ball on the end of a stick. By moving the Moon anti-clockwise around the Earth, the Earth can observe the different phases of the Moon. A new moon, a waxing crescent, half moon, waxing gibbous, and full moon. And then the waning phases. Students could take turns being the Earth, or alternatively, students could use a webcam or camera to show the rest of the class. Here's a way to demonstrate solar eclipses. The Sun is very large and distant compared to the Moon. Therefore, we've used three closely spaced table lamps 
wrapped in cardboard cylinders to light our moon with nearly parallel beams of light. One pupil can represent the Earth, and the moon and its orbit can be represented by a ball fixed to a hula hoop. By holding the hoop at an angle, you can demonstrate that the moon's orbit is tilted at about five degrees compared to the Earth's orbit. Most of the time, the moon will not line up exactly with the Earth and sun, so usually the moon cannot be in a position to block out the sun. The moon appears either above or below the sun, and its shadow does not fall on the Earth. But occasionally, the Earth will be at a place during its orbit where the moon's orbital inclination allows it to pass directly between the Earth and the Sun. It is only when positioned here that the Moon will completely block out the Sun, and that is when we see a solar eclipse. 